짙은 화장을 하며 아주 낯선 시선들이 The Chang Jae-yeon case is named one of the biggest scandals in South Korea and still remains an unsolved mystery. It sheds a light on the dark side of the entertainment industry. There's so many villains in this case that it's sad to know that maybe we will never know the truth and the truth seems to be all twisted on purpose. Many people actually don't know that this case was technically concluded, solved by the South Korean police. But was it really? I mean, it is up in the air for debate for a lot of people, but I think I kind of got down what really happened in this case and I would love to know your opinion. If you guys been following me for a while, you guys know that I was a K-pop singer. I still do music work, I write for famous commercials and things like that, but I did debut in South Korea. I was under the infamous seven year contract and I've been through lawsuits with my former entertainment agencies. And I can really relate to someone like Chang and other artists out there who do not have the best of luck in this industry, you know, becoming a famous celebrity and things like that, and what it means to be under some of these companies that really take the toll out of someone's life. There's a movie also inspired or based on Chang Jae-yoon's case, and it's called The Secret Scandal. So basically this movie is about the struggles of a rookie Korean actress that some actresses even singers, trainees, but mostly it seems like the acting world. That these rookie actors and actresses sometimes have to do things that they do not want in order to get that role. They must go to these karaoke or like night parties or events in order to kind of like please the people who are on the top when it comes to media, big companies and CEOs so that you can get these big roles. And there's this like hush hush things where like a rookie actress that gets like bigger roles in movies. Apparently, you know, they had to do these things in order to get that role easily because there's so much competition when it comes to the entertainment industry. And I just want to ask, is it me or was there an increase of these fake scammers and robocalls that I've been getting through my phone, through my email? Like how do these people get my number and all these information? I've recently found out that our data, our information, personal information is actually sold by these brokers that we don't know about and they make a fortune doing this. These are technically legal brokers, but they make it so hard to remove your information. And that's why I personally have been using Aura to protect my identity online. And you guys know sponsors are a big help to allow these mystery and true crime channels running. So thank you to Aura for sponsoring today's video. They don't only protect your personal information, but they also do VPN, antivirus, password management, and so much more all in one service. No more need to download all these plugins and apps, Aura does it all. Did you know that your information is also on the dark web and Aura protects you from that and they're able to search through the dark web to see if any of your passwords or your information has been leaked and they find it and catch that. You can have them monitor your email addresses, credits, phone numbers, personal information, all your transactions, alert you of any password breaches. I feel so much safer now. And just like we protect our homes in the real life, we should be protecting ourselves on the internet because we live half of our lives on the internet. So go to aura.com slash crazy TV so you can get a 14 day free trial to see if your information had been leaked online. So thank you so much to Aura and let's get back to the story. So actress Chang Taeyeon was born on January 25th, 1980. She was known for her beautiful image and she was tall and she had this like Miss Korea kind of vibe to her, which what I call. And since a young age, she had to live on her own pretty much with her siblings because her parents did pass away when they were young. She dreamed of becoming an actress since a young age. And she had in total only four roles in dramas and one of them actually being a huge hit. The show was called Boys Over Flowers and she acted as Sunny, one of the mean girls in the drama. I remember watching this drama. It was a hit, you guys. <laughs> Shinjo, Sunny, Miranda. According to her friends, she was very passionate about this acting career. Her friends called her a confident woman and not likely to follow others easily. But once she signed to this company, that's when everything changed. Fast forward, if you know this case, I think we all know that she did pass away on March 7th, 2009, found in a stairwell where she was living and she was only 29 years old. And it was ruled that it was self done. This came just hours before she was in contact with her sister where she 
complained about the immense stress with her work, and even talking to her former manager. Now, it was known that Chang was dealing with immense problems with work, having her career seemed like it was being taken away, so she was taking some sleeping pills and things like that. Now, it was only after her passing that the world found out about something called Chopte. I think everybody knew what Chopte was, but it was like a hush hush thing, and this case really brought that to light. Now, Chopte literally translates to really serving something for somebody. So, in this case, most people know it as attending like drinking parties, karaoke, basically spending the night entertaining all these what you call a powerful CEOs of different companies. Now, why do people do these chaptes in these entertainment world? Now, a lot of people already know that when it comes to business, everything is really about your connections and your network. So you kind of hosting a dinner a karaoke night and hopefully win over a business with them. And in the entertainment world, the dark side is that obviously getting auditions, getting like a role in a drama is a really hard thing to do. And a lot of it still is about network and who you know. So some companies, now not much anymore these days, but it was a well-known thing like at least 10 years ago, where companies would have their trainees, their rookie or actress and actors, including guys as well, invite and make a room for for these parties to look good in front of movie producers. Certain company CEOs who maybe have like a big stock or investment in a movie production so that you can get these roles. And even if you can get like a private audition for these roles, that's a big, huge thing. But it goes even darker where like in today's case, like Chang Jae-yeon, that they had to do just more than serving alcohol, just entertaining and being next to them when they're doing karaoke that they were asked to do actual favors in order to get these roles or look good in front of these CEOs. So when Tang passed away, the story goes that her alleged ex-manager found her confession papers. Her papers that she wrote, kind of like foreshadowing what she was going to do, that she was not going to appear any longer, and he kind of leaked this to the world. So this was a seven-page letter, and the summary of it was basically that she wanted to no longer work with her current company and wanted to sue her CEO. She even wrote her ID number, signed it, and in Korea, you do have to put like your fingerprint, which is like the ultimate stamp that this was written by you and what makes it legal documents. And here are just some of the highlights of what was written and what the confession letters were about. So she wrote specific names of the people that she encountered in these night meetings that they asked especially for favors for her, you know, favors and one night and things like that in order for her to appeal and become an actress. She counted over a hundred of these karaoke alcohol night meetings that she had to go to. And the key word is that she was forced by her company CEO. It would be different obviously if she wanted to go, but she was forced specifically and would be cursed and physically abused by the CEO if she didn't go. She would have specific details and sometimes even dates of when these meetings would happen. And sometimes she would be called overseas as well to go to like Thailand to basically be like a golf girl next to these like movie producers and things like that. If she did not or refused to go to these meetings, sometimes she would be threatened to take care of her own self-care when it comes to like going to audition, paying her manager and things like that. The company wouldn't take care of it. They would pretty much like treat her like they abandoned her. Which yes, in South Korea, the way that companies usually work, basically an entertainment company is pretty much supposed to take care of everything financially, providing you with training, managers and things like that. And that money of what they spent on you is deducted when you later make money through stage performances, albums, you being in a movie, commercials, and things like that. But it does lead to huge problems because a lot of the times the company has more control, almost 70% of the power compared to an artist. She also wrote that in some of these meetings, she would be physically assaulted from the CEO, throwing bottles at her in front of everyone and being treated like a slave. She would be grabbed by the hair as well and just constantly, you know, especially verbally abused by her CEO. I personally have met a couple of them in the industry and yes, like it gives me PTSD just thinking about it. So thinking about what Chang Jae-yong went through and knowing what kind of personality the CEO probably had according to her confession letters. Like you can't even imagine, you would think it's a movie, but it's not. And in the end of the letter she wrote, I'm a powerless rookie actress. I want to be freed 
from this pain. And some more information of when police dug into this case, looking at her phone records, her bank records, it was shown that when she went to Philippines to go to these meetings, it was proven that she received about, I believe, $1,000 from one of like a CEO that she was next to. And it was kind of like a proof to the public that she was really going to these meetings and being called and receiving large sums of money in exchange. Something had to go on, right? Now you might think with all these things going on, why didn't she just leave the company? Now, one of the biggest reasons why a lot of artists cannot leave, especially a Korean entertainment contract, is because, like I said, the company has more power over you than the artist. Now, today, there is a standard contract that every entertainment company has to go by. But back then, it was a system where entertainment companies can make up whatever clause and whatever contracts, and it was like a personal contract that they wrote between you and the artist. And in one of the contract clause in her contract with her company, it says, she she must obey everything the company orders related to entertainment. And if she was to break the contract, she was to pay a minimum of $100,000. And probably on top of that, of course, they will make her pay all the expenses of what they spent on her and everything. Her boss also threatened her that if she left, she will be blacklisted from the entertainment industry, never having any opportunities in the future. All those powerful people that you met, that I took you to, I'm gonna tell every one of them to never give you opportunity. Obviously, to a rookie artist who's just in their 20s. This sounds really scary. Chang did try to consult with her fellow actors and her sister by saying, quote, how would I leave? I can't sleep. I can't do anything. This was a time back when you couldn't be an individual artist like today where we have YouTube, TikTok. I mean, this was a time when your only chance of fame was TV. Later on, Tang's voice recording also was released where she was talking to someone about how scary her boss was. And she herself said he was spreading rumors to try and blacklist her and to threaten her. <laughs> So by this time, as this confession letter was released, she became one of the most talked about female actresses, not for her unfortunately acting, but for her confession letter and her exposing the dark side of this entertainment industry. So now we move on to one of the biggest points of this case was the list of men that she wrote down in her letters. The people that she named in her confession paper were powerful CEOs. CEOs of like a big media company, like food and beverage companies, like people with like high power, right? And she claimed that like some of them asked for one night and favors. Now, a lot of them obviously said that they don't remember or that this was just a friendly encounter, that nothing bad ever happened, no favors came and went, that this was simply a meeting. Maybe she came, like there were many people that came and went, right? And a lot of these CEOs, it seems like to the public, got special treatments when being interrogated by the police. I've been interrogated by the police, you guys, the South Korean police in the past. So I know how these interrogation go and literally they ask you nitty gritty about everything about your life just to get the interrogation started. So that alone takes like an hour or two hours just by asking your name, your address, what you do. So even a simple interrogation can take like four hours. And this one CEO where the police came to him where they didn't go to the police station, which is also unusual. They came to him and apparently the interrogation was concluded in 27 minutes or like less than 30 minutes, which is almost unheard of. Cause like I said, asking your name and what you do takes an hour at least. So it seems like most of these people that was interrogated were getting special treatments and favors. But you do have to listen to both sides of the story, right? The problem was that Chang wasn't here anymore. She's not here to say that, hey, what I wrote was all real or not. Maybe, maybe she was just trying to get out of a contract and was lying about some of these stuff. But you don't know that because the victim in this case is not here anymore. It's hard to investigate. I mean, without video and photo proof, how are you going to make this a case? And that was also 
one of the reasons why police and prosecutors said that they can't really charge them with anything. But in 2018, with new witness coming forward and due to public demand, the case was reopened, causing another great controversy. And this is where we enter a woman named Yoon Ti Oh. And she's gonna take us into another farther rabbit hole with this case. And it's crazy. You guys let me know what you guys think about her. So Yoon Ti Oh was also an actress who was signed to Chang Ja Yeon's company back then, the same company. And she became this whistleblower for Chang Ja Yeon and this is how she came to her fame. Again, not really for her acting roles, but for being related to Chang Ja Yeon. Now Yoon was a trainee back when Chang Ja Yeon was also in the company and she was there for about seven months. The case is a little confusing because I believe in 2010, when she was interviewed by the police initially, she claims that she herself never saw her CEO making anyone go to these alcohol meetings. But later in 2018, she came forward to claim that she did see Chang's complete list of men during these alcohol night meetings and asked the public for help to solve Chang Ja Yeon's case. So basically she was claiming that there was a list of men that Chang Ja Yeon actually wrote and this list was supposedly missing somewhere only seen by her. And she claimed that she were at these night meetings with Chang Ja Yeon in just few occasions. She also claimed that one time she thinks that Chang might have been drugged because she saw all of a sudden Chang being very disoriented. So overall she gave a lot of testimonies to the prosecutors trying to solve Chang Ja Yeon's case. And it seems like her story started to get more intensified as time went on and she did receive thousands of dollars in support from the public for her safety. She was claiming that as she was coming forward, you know, people were threatening her. Her life that she was obviously now going against these powerful CEOs trying to silence certain people, especially getting support from the government and the Democratic Party. So she was receiving a lot of attention, a lot of support saying that she was very brave for coming forward and speaking for the industry, especially women who go through this but and this is where we enter a controversy with her because people who knew Yoon and Chang were saying that actually Yoon and Chang were not even close to begin with and her story actually changed multiple times as she pointed out different people in different interviews there is a photo of Chang and Yoon actually meeting, so she didn't know her, but her claiming that Chang opened up to Yoon about her difficulties and her being at these meetings were false, according to some people. Yoon actually went on pretty quickly to even write a book called The 13th Testimony. This is when even more allegations of Yoon lying came forward. And actually the author of this book, I guess the co-author who wrote it with her, filed a lawsuit against Yoon claiming that all of this was actually false, that Yoon was lying about the whole thing. And by Yoon using Chang Ja Yeon as like her way to fame, she not only gained fans, but used that money. And nobody really knows if she really used the money for her safety or not and she never ended up actually giving this money back. I mean, technically it was donations, so she doesn't have to give it back, but you know, a lot of people were not complaining about the inconsistencies of her story. And she claimed that she saw this list of 40 to 50 CEOs that Chang made. And it seems like the police said, oh, Yoon is the only one who claimed that there is this list and they don't actually believe that this list exists. But again, she did talk to the prosecutors and was a witness and gave multiple statements. So would a crazy lady like that just make up all these stuff and go to multiple sessions. And I believe she did go through a hypnosis therapy to remember certain people. So there were these 50-50 side of was she really telling the truth or not? And Chang Ja Yeon's actually former boyfriend at the time when she passed away came forward later on saying that he never heard of Yoon's name or Chang Ja Yeon ever mentioning her name. He also said that he couldn't believe that someone that he has never heard of or was close to Chang Ja Yeon would even be ready to publish publish a book. The public really did turn on Yoon pretty quickly and she was now facing multiple lawsuits of lying to the investigators and the whole book thing. And this is when Yoon decided to return to Canada and she has not returned to Korea ever since. She insists still to this day that she is telling the truth and that all these people are trying to block her from speaking up. 
Currently, the police are trying to arrest her for fraud. She does remain in Canada, but there is a red warning, meaning she can't really travel to any other countries because it will pop up in their system. So is she doing all of this for fame or is she really being targeted by these powerful people that maybe they somehow were able to turn this narrative around? And this is where we enter the final rabbit hole, at least what I call hopefully final. And this is the rabbit hole that not a lot of people know because it did happen like after 10 plus years since Chang passed away. So as new evidence came out after 2019, the court actually confirmed that the entire seven pages that Chang supposedly wrote was not all written by her, but was actually also written by her manager, her former manager that leaked this whole thing. They compared the handwriting of all these pages and it was confirmed that some was written by her and some was actually written by the former manager. So it seems like what really happened was that there was a mass drama beef, a fight between the CEO of Chang's company and the manager. And it seems like this manager who also used to work for the CEO wanted to make his own entertainment company and decided to take some of the actresses from that company A and make his own management with it while these actresses were still legally contracted to company A. And this was all to get a revenge on company A CEO. So this patch released these never before seen photos of Chang meeting with a former manager multiple times a week before her death. He apparently told Chang that he can help her get released from the contract if she was to write a confession letter to help him prosecute the CEO. And if he was to be prosecuted, her contract will be legally over, which is not entirely true. But this is what the manager said to Chang in order to make her believe that. Her being in a desperate situation and having someone say, I'm gonna save you. This is what's going to get you out of that contract and finally you're free. Obviously, Chang is gonna be like doing whatever this manager is telling her to do. So we later find out that these seven pages was not a goodbye letter by Chang, but this was a confession letter that she wanted to use to get out of the contract. And we find out that the manager promised Chang that her identity will be concealed, that it will be hidden from the media so nobody finds out about this and she will still be able to have a chance to be in the industry again. And in Chang's letter, she wrote that she was S assaulted by her CEO, but her sister actually claims that Chang never mentioned her being actually assaulted by him and that she believes that she wrote it in the letter because a former manager told her to do so, meaning that some of the things that she wrote about in this letter could have been exaggerated and coached by this manager in order for her to potentially get out of the contract. We also find out back when Chang passed away, the family asked the manager to just burn these confession letters because they didn't want the media knowing about this. They just wanted to send her peacefully. So the manager in front of the family burned these confession letters proving that you know he's gonna get rid of it when in actuality he made copies of it before he met the family and decided to leak it to the public to gain a favor from the public for his own benefits because he wanted to get back at that company A CEO. He literally wanted to say F you to the CEO and do whatever that he can to put him behind bars. I think we all know that the CEO may not be a great guy, but it seems like the manager is also not a great guy either. He portrayed a story to the world that was not entirely true for his own business, as his plan was to bring two of the biggest stars from Kim's company and create his own. Because actress Lee was illegally signed to this manager's new company, they might have used Chang Jae-yeon's confession letter to blow this whole thing up to protect these veteran actress. Actress Lee was also brought in a controversy, her having an affair with a lot younger men, you know, cheating on her husband. And some say that they use Chang Zayun's media to cover that story up. So to sum this up, it seems like Chang Zayun was just in the middle for this company CEO and the manager and these actresses own benefits and whatever blood war that they were having. The mystery also is two hours before Chang passed away, she was talking to her manager. What were they talking about? Could this have led her to do something to herself. According to witnesses, they believe that as Chang found out that her former manager was spreading the word, exposing to her other people, unlike his promise of keeping her identity a secret, 
She asked for the letter back from the manager. She might have said, hey, I no longer want you to use this letter. Like this was not the agreement, but the manager refused to do so. And now the last person that she thought she could trust can no longer be trusted. She probably felt like there was nobody on her side anymore. And now that her identity might be revealed, she really might get into a big trouble with these powerful people who might want to do no good to her. And she felt like there was no turning back maybe. So now the final conclusion from the court, they ruled that the confession letter does seem to be partially true from Chang and will not be completely disregarded, but there was no witnesses to back up her claims. The ex-manager was later also found to change his story several times about the former CEO and some incidences that happened to Chang. The police also concluded that it was nearly impossible to investigate regarding the assaults according to these confession letters because many of the witnesses and people refused to talk to them. Finally, the CEO and ex-manager was actually sentenced to prison time, the CEO being sentenced for physical assault and the ex-manager being sent for like blackmailing the CEO. So they try to screw each other and screw themselves over. Nobody really knows the actual truth anymore except Chang herself because it seems like so many people are involved and many people are they're trying to conceal this. So who knows what the actual truth is. Regarding the confession letters, I do think it's possible that Tang was writing the truth, but at the same time mixed with maybe the manager telling her, hey, make that story like, you know, five times worse than what it is so that you can really get back at the CEO, so that you can really get out of this contract. And that could have been possible because there's also opinions out there where they believe that Tang is being portrayed as some sort of victim when in actuality Chang was someone that agreed to do these things and received large sum of money, you know, attending these events and night parties and that it was the ex-manager in certain parts of the media portraying her as this victim in order to get some kind of like a sorrow sob story out of this. So there's so many different opinions, rumors, and rabbit hole about this case. At the end of the day, being a rookie actress with just hopes and dreams and trusting her life into all these entertainment people. And there's a lot of wrong people that got involved. And me being in the Korean entertainment as well, although I've met good people, I've also met a lot of people who just drained my energy. Being in a lawsuit with entertainment companies similar to this case, it was scary at first. I, I don't even know how I even like went through all of that. Being threatened for hundreds of thousands of dollars, I was scared. I knew that the company wasn't right for me and that there were a lot of internal problems that was going to just chain me up for seven years, which is like, which is usually like the standard amount of years that you're contracted. And I'm thinking of actually writing a book about this as well, about the time that I had in, in the industry. Let me know what you guys have thought about Chang Jae-yeon's mystery. I mean, is it still a mystery? Is it not? See you guys in my next video.